Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, today I'm going to present uh, the research we made on OpenShift clusters. Uh, we made this research as a part of our uh, security work uh, to secure the OpenShift and the customers using OpenShift. So in this uh, research, we will present uh, possible attacks of routing over and the NSA jacking attack, which are possible uh, only on OpenShift environment. And we will also uh, understand like how, what we can do and what steps we might take to prevent uh, those attacks from happening. So uh, first let's uh, understand what OpenShift is. Uh, if you're already uh, familiar with Kubernetes, so OpenShift is a orchestrated uh, platform which is uh, based on a Kubernetes in its underlying uh, uh, level. Uh, it's a cloud platform uh, where uh, developers or companies can use it uh, for container uh, platform. Uh, the container platform actually helps developers to deploy their applications on the cloud infrastructures. It means that uh, because it is a container platform, you can deploy any application and it will work. Uh, uh, depends on the uh, cluster and the uh, pods you are uh, uh, configuring. Uh, OpenShift also provides a multi-tenant feature. It means that uh, one company might have multi-tenants, uh, users or environment, or uh, multiple companies might be in the same cluster under different tenants. Uh, it, help, it helps uh, to manage uh, multi-different users uh, on one cluster. Uh, another important thing to understand for this uh, uh, research and for the slides uh, is the OpenShift namespace. Uh, the namespace came uh, straight from the, uh, was uh, inherited from uh, Kubernetes. A namespace is the place where we can uh, isolate uh, resources in a cluster and scope them for uh, specific uh groups which will be assigned to a namespace um the, for people who are familiar with openshift uh in openshift the namespace is also known as a project uh but in openshift the uh the namespace uh provides more additional administrative control uh on the project that within the namespaces Uh, another important thing to understand uh, for this presentation are the ports. Ports are actually um, a kind of uh, uh, running uh, the container images itself in uh, one host. Like in one host, we can uh, have uh, multiple ports. Uh, and there, you actually, you actually, you can deploy your uh, container images that you develop and run, run them and uh, deploy them. And namespace, as we already described, is where you can uh, isolate resources in the cluster. Uh, the project is where uh, you have, you might have multiple groups of namespaces. Like if you, if you, if. Uh, team has a project. So it might have uh, several namespaces under this project and it's helping to define different and isolated permission and policies for each namespace. Uh, and uh, a pod can be in a namespace. Uh, service is uh, uh, multiple running uh, ports which can define application that are is running on a pod. So usually a service, uh, if we, if, for example, if we're running a MySQL uh, container image in a pod, so there will be a service pod that will help us to uh, describe the uh, MySQL pod and service as kind of a DNS uh, entity uh, that will help 
uh, the coordinates in the cluster to understand where, where we have the MySQL code. So, and every service has its own dedicated IP address. And it's, as I said, it's helping us to define uh, which application running or which pod. Uh, so uh, I'm going to discuss more about services because one of the attacks uh, that we will discuss soon is uh, also defined at the services level. So uh, as we said, uh, a service is a logical set of pods. Uh, uh, it means that a service is not uh, really a physical pod, but it describes a pod that it is dedicated to like a MySQL service will have a description and the uh on all the management information about the pod that's running the MySQL uh, application uh so each service has its own IP and uh, name uh and through those DNS names the pods that are aligned to this service uh, can be reached through. Uh, and each service can be exposed using uh, some, uh, some defined endpoint and a route. Uh, uh, it, it even can be in some extended situation if a developer or admin decides so a service might be also ex uh, accessible outside if the route was defined um and uh one namespace might contain uh several uh services so if we have a service that is running on the namespace so the dns name of the service always will uh co will contain the prefix in its name it's in this dns name of the root namespace that it's aligned to. For example, if we have a service, MySQL service that is running on a root uh, namespace that is called X, so its prefix DNS name will, will always contain uh, X dot and etc. Uh, OpenShift routing. Uh, so as we say, uh, each pod might contain an application. So for example, a developer decided to build a web app uh, just to test something or for some questionnaire. Uh, so what he did is he deployed the container image uh, with this application, with this, this uh, web app, which is running on a pod. And he would like a user outside of of the cluster or inside of the cluster to access this web app. So there's an option in OpenShift is to define a route. A route is that you define a URL where uh, people can reach out to your application that running on a pod through this URL. Um, Uh, when uh, uh, when someone wants to access a web application, like if it's someone within the cluster or outside the cluster, so uh, uh, the pod that's running the web application always will be uh, accessible using this one, the namespace. Remember that in the previous slide, I told you that service will always contain a DNS name uh, with the prefix of, of the root namespace that it's running under that. So uh, the DNS of a local pod that you're running your uh, web application always start with namespace cluster local. So uh, when the connection is reaching out uh, the core DNS in OpenShift, so uh, it always will look for a pod that's running the application with this uh, uh, with this uh, pattern of in you know, the DNS name. Um, 
so how it works uh, when we are asking for application that is running on specific uh, namespace so there will be always a master name server that will get the query and then it, it will look in the uh, in the, uh, you will talk with all the services within the cluster and we'll look for application name and the URL it got, uh, dot the namespace name, dot cluster, dot local. And if the uh, DNS request fails, so it will go forward. It will look like it will add a service in, in into the DNS name. And then it will look like uh, application name dot service name dot name server namespace dot svc dot cluster dot local and this is how the uh, this is the way we are looking for a specific pod that running our web application and this is uh, made by our services every service that is attached to a pod that running a web application. Uh, should know the uh, this address of the application that it it it, it attached to. Uh, so as I said before, uh, uh, we we also can expose a service or a web application externally. So there is a specific command or uh, that a developer or a user can run and tell that you want to expose this uh, this application or service externally. Um, so when we will expose the uh, application externally, so uh, OpenShift will automatically generate this uh, lo some long URL uh, for the application to be accessible outside uh, of the cluster. So it always will start with the route name. Route name is usually uh, some long string of the pod name and service name. Uh, there will be a dash with namespace and dot uh, some, some specific suffix. It might be com or other stuff. Um, each pod has its own DNS config through this service that is assigned to. And also uh, each pod has uh, dedicated DNS policies. What is mean DNS policies? It means that uh, router admin, uh, sorry, the cluster admin can define how the DNS uh, queries and uh, will work inside the cluster. So, uh, uh, this DNS policy called DNS policy, like uh, you see here in the presentation. So, uh, sorry. No. So uh, each the, each uh, 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 class admin can define uh, what will be the DNS policy. So. The one policy said uh, that first you will look for the DNS resolver within the cluster. And the second policy said, please first look outside of the cluster. And if you did it fired, so please look inside the cluster. So uh, in, in our next attack, like in the DNS hijacking attack, we will, more, we will talk more about the DNS policy uh, field. Uh, so uh, let's discuss the two attacks that I will present in this uh, presentation. Uh, I will talk about the DNS takeover and DNS hijacking attack, uh, which are common attack in the world. Like everyone probably heard about those kind of attacks. But in this presentation, I will talk about uh, DNS takeover and DNS hijacking attacks specifically uh, on OpenShift that uh, might happen only for OpenShift environment. Uh, so as we know, uh, DNS takeover attack, uh, it happens when uh, DNS queries are incorrectly resolved uh, and the attacker actually want us to direct our uh, communication into its malicious site. 
Uh, so it might happen like the attack vector can be either when the attacker install a malware on our computer and then he and then he transfers our uh, DNS queries, or it may happen uh, with uh, takeover routes. Um, that uh, one example we will see in this presentation on OpenShift. Uh, the DNS hijacking attack is uh, is another attack where DNS queries are incorrectly resolved. Uh, so it will redirect our uh, uh, our communication into a malicious site of the attacker. So the attack vector here is usually done by an intruder attacker uh, that can change our DNS settings and then it redirects all our data into his malicious uh, website. Uh, and uh, in this research, like we will present how, how it can happen in OpenShift and namespace and services. Um, okay, so the DNS takeover attack in OpenShift. So uh, to perform this uh, for this research, we took we work on OpenShift version 4.10. Uh, there are other older version of OpenShift, which is three. Uh, uh, OpenShift 3 uh, version 3 is already deprecated and other ver new version of OpenShift uh, weren't tested on that. So, uh, so this attack is correct for OpenShift version 4.10 clusters. And we use for our uh, 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 research two users, one dev user and one dev user two. Uh, from different uh, tenants and different accounts. Uh, and now I will understand how uh, malicious user dev user two, which is an internal internal user within the same cluster. Like it might be that dev user one and dev user two are uh, sitting in different namespaces and different tenants. And still, dev user will be able to attack dev user one. So uh, uh, let's understand how the DNS takeover attack works, and then I, I will try to explain you uh, about the attack. So uh, let's assume that dev user one is it's our good user is creating a project and application called my guestbook. It means that uh, he has a namespace. Uh, somewhere and under this namespace, he created an uh, application running on the pod and he called it uh, my guestbook. So, uh, dev user one decided to expose this web application. As we said before, any user in OpenShift can expose uh, the routing of its application. So, everybody outside in the public world will able also to access to this application and play with that or do whatever they want. So uh, let's say that when we run this expose uh, command, we got this long, long, long URL. So this URL is the uh, access uh, URL for, for user outside of, of the cluster. So as you can see, this is, exactly the prefix that we did we discussed. So my guestbook, my route project is the service name and this is the uh, namespace and this is some uh, uh, domain in which we run the, uh, the cluster. Oops. No. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, here you can see the commands uh, we ran uh, to create uh, this attack. So people that want to play with that uh, and have OpenShift cluster, so you can follow the command. I put it also in the paper and you can create uh, uh, the application. So in this case, as you can see, our host name is the route we got 
for the our application, my guestbook. So this is all the accessible URL that we can access the our application tool. So now say that uh, um, this URL is too long and our dev user wants to make uh, his user uh, more easier life. And he said, okay, I want to give a shorter name, a shorter URL from this long URL that I, I get to, like this, the default long URL I, the user got from OpenShift. So he decided to give it a shorter URL. Let's say it's a full multicast org. So what uh, so what he did is he, he went to a Google DNS provider and then he registered under a C name, uh, this uh, long application URL, and he gave and he gave it uh, a link C name to full multicast org. So as you can see here. Uh, now, every because we have a point, a C name, a uh, canonical name point uh, to our uh, web application that is running on our OpenShift cluster. So now everybody can type full multicast.org uh, and access our uh, web book application. Uh, okay, let's say that the dev, dev user one decided that. Uh, uh, his guest book application is not needed anymore. And what he decided is just to delete the application from his pod. Like he deleted the container image uh, and the project. So, uh, but the dev user one, and also, sorry, he deleted also the route. It's so important to say. So he just deleted everything according to this application in within his cluster and within his namespace but what he forgot to do is to go to dns uh, google dns provider and he forgot to remove the c name uh, link uh, to his web book application and also he forgot to remove the cache records uh, from uh, core dns uh, which is the app proxy in OpenShift. So in that case, we are dealing with dangling route. It means that we have, we still have in our uh, uh, DNS records some OpenShift route that is attached to a uh, uh, full multicast org, and we still have a C name record that is pointing to our uh, route that is not attached to application. So uh, this case of dangling route is leading to my lead uh, to route takeover attack. Let's understand how it works. So uh, as we said, uh, dev user two is our uh, malicious user, which is running on the same cluster, but on different namespace on, and in different tenant. Like is not from the same organization as dev user one. So uh, let's say that he decided uh, to find an in interesting thing on the cluster that is running to, and he find out that there is some dangling route in the cluster. And he also find out that there is a C name record that is pointing uh, to this uh, uh, long uh, routing URL and the answer is not reachable so in this case they found out that there is a dangling uh route inside his cluster and he will try to take over this uh, routing so he decided uh to try and create a fishing fishing site inside instead of the uh, original site that their user uh, uh was using so uh, what it did is he created uh, a new routing application in his tenant, in his namespace. And in the host name of this, uh, of his uh, application uh, service uh, uh, configuration file, 
he, he put in his uh, host name, he put fumulticas.org. So now everyone that still thinks that he is going to dev user one site, actually going to dev user web application running on the same cluster and OpenShift still thinks uh, because the core DNS records are still there, still thinks that there is a route that is attached to this short name and forward the request to, into the cluster and then the core DNS uh, searching for the service that knows about this fullmulticast.org and the, currently the only service that knows about this fullmulticast.org is the service that their user is running. And as you can see here, now it is controlled by dev user 2. So uh, dev user 2 was able to use a dangly route inside the OpenShift cluster and uh, manipulate user and to go into his site instead of to the original site. Uh, okay, so uh, I hope it was clear. Uh, now let's go to uh, the second attack. Uh, that we discovered is the DNS hijacking attack. Again, it's in OpenShift environment. Uh, so as I said previously, there is a way where we can uh, configure default DNS policy for our uh, clusters, for our pods, sorry, running on the cluster. So each, each admin uh, might define a DNS policy for these pods inside this cluster that is managing. So the default configuration will usually be the cluster first DNS policy. Uh, and another one will be cluster first with the host name. Uh, and when we have a cluster first with the host name, it usually will look like for a path like namespace as we see cluster uh, local. Uh, so these two default, default configuration say that the admin uh, prefers that when a user wants to reach out to some site or to some uh, uh, URL or some domain name, so the uh, core DNS and the services will still look inside uh, pods that uh, that uh, serving the same DNS uh, uh, name. And if it's not found, then it will uh, look out outside of the cluster. So it means cluster first means please uh, the, the DNS resolution will be first made inside the cluster. Um, so this is a default behavior in, in OpenShift, at least OpenShift uh, 4.10. Uh, oops, sorry. No, no. Uh, okay, so here in the, uh, uh, we will see, we will go to a POC. So in our POC, a malicious user uh, decided to create a namespace name uh, that he called that uh, org. And within this service, he, he called the service as, as AASA2023. So, and let's assume that the pods configured with class of first DNS policy. It means that when a user would like to reach out to a URL called aasaa2023.org because of this one, uh, as we said, first will be the service name dot uh, namespace name. Uh, when we configure the cluster first policy. So uh, if it was configured, so it means that, uh, and sorry, and also uh, because it allowed, allowed, it's allowing a user to create a namespace with a TLD, uh, like or .com. It, it might happen also if uh, attacker will call it, uh, it's namespace as com and a service as Google. So everyone that will, 
try to reach out google.com uh will go to his malicious uh pod under running on under this service so as you can see this is the configuration so it also listed all the plcs listed in our uh, paper so if you want you want to try it and see that if your cluster is affected or you need to change something so you can just run this plc so as you can see here yeah we define the namespace as org and we define the uh service name is asa 2023 you can do the same for google.com uh, or other side that you, you would like to and um uh, uh, and now everyone that when we try to to reach out into a uh, uh, url called asa.org.org we reach out to a fake site uh that was uh, created by by us, like as a malicious user. Uh, and it happened because uh, a cluster first, first DNS policy was defined and the pods are looking for internal uh, DNS resolver. And then if they if there is an answer that, okay, there is a service called uh, ASAA and under namespace org. So there is a match in the resolution and everything will go to the malicious fold. So here you can see uh, more about uh, uh, the default uh, route. Uh, you can run like this command for OpenShift ingress to see like if you really reach out to a fake site. Um, so uh, the conclusion from this research was that uh, it's really important to change default configurations and policies uh, within OpenShift. Uh, for example, uh, the attack for a DNS hijacking might, might be prevented by just changing the default configuration for DNS policy not to cluster first. Uh, and it's really important to clear, to periodically clear the cache for uh, a proxy or a core DNS in the cluster uh, and make sure that uh, those kinds of attacks won't happen. This this might be a critical uh, uh, situation, like critical findings on multi-tenant environments uh, because there we have uh, multi-customers or multi-different users running on the cluster and then they might attack uh, other run other other users running on the same cluster, and in the future work, uh, we would we would like to have uh, to propose a research on the framework for detection on those kind of attacks and uh, and mitigation. And this is it. <laughs>